Hi everyone, welcome to Indo-Pacific 2023 here in Sydney. Australia's Defence Strategic Review recommended that the Navy move towards a Tier 1 and Tier 2 fleet structures. As a consequence, there's a lot of new ship design on display on the show floor, and that's what we're going to focus on in our Day 1 video. First, we're taking a close look at Navantia Australia. They're showcasing several new ship designs. To find out about those new models, I am with Sarah McLeod. Sarah, good morning. So, uh, starting with the new corvette designs uh, for the Tier 2 requirement, what, what can you tell us about those? Yeah, so today we're uh, showing off a lot of uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2 combatant vessels. So, uh, we have here the Tasman class corvette and the Alpha 5000 corvette. The Tasman class corvette is Navantia Australia's pitch for the corvette program. It is an Australianized version of the Alpha 3000 corvette which is currently being made for the Saudi Arabian Navy. It has three reference vessels in service right now, so it is a proven design, integrating a lot of Australian upgrades that are requirements of the Navy as of today. It has a high level of commonality with the Anzac class frigates, meaning that uh, training would be reduced. It has a high level of automation, also meaning reduced crews. Sarah, what's the displacement of the Tasman class corvette? So she can go up to 3,600 tonnes, depending on the requirements uh, of the capability placed on the vessel. Um, she can actually go smaller than that quite significantly. And because of that, she's a quite compact design. Um, so you'll see that she's quite heavily armed for a highly compact design. She's got 16 VLS cells, four quadruple SSM launchers, two triple torpedo launchers, um, two remote controlled weapon systems and the capability for a SeaWiz up the back. It can be either Millennium or Phalanx or whatever you want it to be. It's completely up to requirements. Uh, Sarah, can you get us through some of the sensor systems fitted on this uh, Corvette? So the Tasman class is capable in anti-submarine warfare by leveraging the integration of the Captus 4C sonar. It also has a hull-mounted sonar as an option as well, which you can see on this uh, model. Um, you can also see up the top here that we have integrated the CFAR-2L radar. And we've announced today a collaboration between Austal, Civmec and Navantia Australia to build the Tasman class Corvette in Henderson in WA. So this is the Alpha 5000 combatant. It is a multi-role combatant vessel. So not only is it a ship that carries VLS and weapons, but also has the capability to house uh, humanitarian hospital supplies. It has the capability to contain uh, unmanned surface vessels in the back here. It also has several mission sets, which include uh, mine warfare and anti-mine warfare, anti-submarine warfare, we are now standing by the frigate and uh, destroyer design, so Navantia Australia is uh, pitching those for the tier 1 requirement. Uh, Sarah, uh, to start with, uh, so that's an, a model of the in-service Hobart class air warfare destroyer, but Navantia Australia is uh, proposing a flight 2 version of that uh, destroyer. Yeah, so we've proposed an evolved version of the current in-fleet Hobart class destroyers. Now these new destroyers have evolved anti-submarine warfare capabilities and they also have the capability not only to have the SPY-1D radar but they also have the capability for the Aegis radar. Uh, so we are also proposing this design for the Tier 1 requirement. Uh, what will be the, the, the features of the Australian version of the F-110? Yeah, so if you see this model here is actually the version of the F-110 that is being built for the Spanish Navy currently. The Australian version will have a updated radar to include the CFAR radar. What are some of the other key design features of the, uh, of the F-110? There's a lot of uh, automations going on. Yeah, so the F-110 destroyer actually integrates a whole suite of new innovative digital technologies that enhance the capabilities of the ship at sea, such as the ISS, Integrated Services System, which uh, integrates all the services internal to the ship uh, into one platform um, and also includes the digital twin which allows you to get real-time updates about the performance of the ship and projection of force capability at sea. Last but not least, Sarah, uh, this is what you call the Flight 3 destroyer. Uh, what is it exactly? So this is the future of destroyers as we've designed. It is a 128 VLS destroyer. It's got two pads of 64 VLS cells here. It's got two phalanx uh, sea whizzers up at the front and the back of the vessel. We have six remote controlled weapon stations around the vessels. 
uh, torpedoes along the side. She's a heavily armed vessel. That's one of her key features is how much arms we put on this vessel. And she features next generation energy systems that allow us to power the weapons such as the directed energy weapon and all of the other amazing capabilities we have on board. So this is what things could look like in the future. Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are now on the booth of German shipbuilder Thyssen Group Marine Systems, who is showcasing for the very first time a new frigate design. To find out more about this new frigate, with me today is uh, Jonathan Kammerman, Senior Naval Advisor at TKMS. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your time for, for meeting with me. So, first, what is what is the name of this new design? It's our Miko A210. It's the natural successor of the Miko A200, which, as you're aware, is currently in, still in production. But uh, we have evolved the uh, A200 to the 210, A210, in the same way we evolved the 200, the Anzac, into the A200. But uh, we've now incorporated the features that we believe that technologically, uh, as well as operationally, are more appropriate. Uh, for today's battle. So my guess is that uh, you're offering this design uh, for the tier one requirement uh, here in Australia. It's showing the, the CA radar, is that correct? Yes, it's, it's not been designed specifically for that. We've been working on the 210 for many months. Uh, and as you well know, the Miko, it's uh, completely adaptable. So you can have any number of radars. We happen to populate this mod particular model with a CEA. It's a very good radar and it fits very, very well into our philosophy of having a two fighting island uh, arrangement. All our ships, as you well know, from the A300 and, the, uh, and so on, and now the A210, uh, we have the, the ship divisible into two fighting islands. Each island is able to be destroyed, and the other island you can still float, move, and fight. So you have to distribute your effectors and your sensors as we've done. In terms of the propulsion, the hull and machinery, we've retained a lot of the basic arrangements and ideas that we currently incorporate in the A200 because it's such a superb platform. For example, the Kodak warp combined diesel and gas uh, water jet and refined propellers. This ship has exactly the same arrangement. Um, more powerful because it's a heavier ship than the A200, which is 4,700 tons and slightly longer to accommodate the four Mark 41 strike length uh, in the forecastle. But in essence, uh, the Holland machinery is a lengthened version of, of the A200 with more powerful machinery, but the arrangement is the same. I see that uh, you can accommodate uh, directed energy weapons. Yes. All our new designs uh, and not only accommodate them, but all of the peripheral systems that support a, a, a high energy laser uh, are also available in the design of the ship, particularly the electrical supply with super capacitors and so on and the uh, sufficient electrical energy. So not only for the, ins for the inception of a high energy laser with today's technology, but also growing as we see them growing rapidly up to a thousand kilowatts um, there's not a direct relationship in, in the energy, but you have to have sufficient energy. Uh, and we've, we've certainly taken the one from Rheinmetall and, and it's, in, it's, it's part of the, the inner layer defense of the ship. All our 10 Mika A200s are completely different configurations of suppliers and level of, 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 of lethality, but they can all be fitted to the same standard if, if you wish them very rapidly. So that's the, that's the basic design philosophy behind, uh, and we've retained that design philosophy. All right, Jonathan, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. We are now on the BAE Systems booth uh, with Aaron Cook, Campaign Manager for BAE Systems Maritime here in Australia. The company is showcasing a new variant of the Hunter class frigate, and uh, we're about to, to find out more about it. So. Uh, Aaron, good morning. Good morning, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. So what are some of the new design features of this uh, this new design you launched uh, today? So this is our guided missile frigate variant of the Hunter-class frigate. Um, it is more of a combatant 
for the tier one market for future batches and progressions of the Hunter Class program. It's an Australian evolution of the platform. And, and what we've done is fundamentally remove the Mission Bay capability from the frigate and replace it with strike length VLS, an additional 64, and some additional NSM launches for surface strike capability. As the ship, shipbuilder for the Hunter Class program, uh, you would have no uh, issues uh, incorporating this in, in, in the program? Yes, yeah, so fundamentally it maintains all of the common systems in the hull form. It's 85% common to the current design. Um, we have the ability to pivot the modules that the VLS sits in with the mission bay during the build process. Um, but fundamentally, this is currently looking at future batches of the program. How many uh, VLSs in, uh, in total and how many uh, anti-ship missiles? So currently 96 VLS on the variant shown. Uh, we also have options for various others, including 48, 64 and the 96 shown. And there's four times four NSM launches currently shown. All right, Aaron, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day. We are now with Gibson Cox, the naval design firm uh, from the US. They are showcasing for the very first time a new frigate design called the Australian Light Frigate. To find out more with me today is uh, Levi Catton, Managing Director at Gibson Cox Australia. Levi, good morning. Thank you, Xavier. How are you? Thanks for your time for uh, meeting with us. So what can you tell us about this uh, new design? What are some of its uh, design features? Thank you. Yeah, so the Australian Light Frigate is based on Gibson Cox's 94-year he history of naval design. This frigate uh, is based on a reference program for an allied navy, which is uh, holding a cut steel ceremony next week. And it's going to be delivering two ships uh, in October 2026. Uh, this is a 117 metre, 380, uh, 3800 tonne frigate, uh, almost the exact same size as the REN's current Anzac class. So we've focused on a fairly substantial missile loadout as the primary payload. That's a very high number of uh, anti-ship missiles for like yeah. what is basically a frigate. Like why, why so many uh, NSMs? So our conversations indicate that combat weight is really a high priority for the Royal Australian Navy. And so we're uh, looking to deliver a capability that delivers a lot of combat weight in a lean, affordable package. Uh, and we're hopeful that we'll be able to uh, offer that as a solution to the RAN's potential tier two combatant program, which you know we hope might eventuate at some point in the future. I don't see a main gun, uh, what's the reason? There's a couple of schools of thought on heavy main guns nowadays. So we're responding to the school of thought that says that the missile payload is the, uh, is the primary payload. Uh, we certainly can fit a main gun. The reference design has a main gun. Um, that's really something that we would need to follow the requirements on that issue. And uh, last but not least, Levi, uh, so your uh, ship design company, you're not a shipbuilder. Where would these uh, be built? Do you have a partner in, here in Australia? Yeah, so we're speaking to our partners about our delivery strategy, but it's absolutely our intention that it would be built by Australians in Australia. Very well, Levi, thank you very much. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Xavier. Thank you. Oh, oh.